Hey everybody, so it's the news of the day today. Uh, we've got the announcements for the NHL Hall of Fame. We have a bunch of uh, other items, and I know this is coming out a bit late, but I'm glad I waited because um, uh, more information to talk about some of these things. Okay, first up, some easy stuff. Tampa Bay facility has reopened, and that was yesterday, so the Tampa Bay Lightning facility was one of the facilities that was closed when the 11 players tested positive. They had three players and two staff members test positive there. Uh, so they've cleaned everything up, I guess, and uh, they reopened yesterday. Um, Tampa, they have most of their players back in town already, so they really need their practice facility. The NHL... Um, NHL teams are asking players to return to North America by Friday. Um, there, uh, yeah, that's tomorrow. I'm filming this on Thursday. Uh, it allows players to be tested, and if the test results show that they have uh, possibly have COVID, they'll have the 14 days they need to self isolate. And for pl other players, they'll have the 14 days just because they're returning to Canada or, well, for Canada anyway. I don't know if it's all through North America. So they're asking them to return by Friday. That means they'll be ready for July 10th if they're able to start training camps then, phase three. Next up, a local health protocol could snag Vancouver's chances as a hub city. So this is the one that I'm kind of glad I waited. Um, so it's reported that Vancouver might not be as much as they were yeah, they're almost a lock. It seems like they may be out of the running because of, a, lo of a, um, a local health protocol that they can't agree on. So then I watched the Hockey Guys video on uh, News of the Day video. Not too long, just like 10 minutes before shooting this. And um, he has a worry that the reason that they're not agreeing is that Vancouver wants a little bit more stricter uh, protocol. And uh, the NHL doesn't. They want least, uh, less stricter. And that's not really a good thing. It doesn't bode well for player safety. And uh, he thinks this might not be a good thing. So, yeah, maybe that's what the, the problem is. They're not really saying what the problem is. So this could be what it is. And it's just something is tying it up. So it leaves Edmonton and uh, Toronto still open for Canada hubs. Next item up. NHL is not imposing age restrictions for coaches and staff. So there's a few coaches. Uh, I think there's 12 active members of NHL coaching staffs. That's coaches and staff, uh, assistant coaches and stuff, uh, are 60 or older by the end of June. So they're not, the NHL is not re imposing any restrictions or banning them. It'll be up to them whether they want to take part or not. Uh, but I have to say now, this too, there's old things coming out. As much as it looked like it was going to happen, there's some new things coming out where, um, I don't know if this is in jeopardy or not, the return to play. So we're going to have to keep an eye on it for the next couple of days. Next item. Um, NHL players are returning to North America in numbers. So the European players, players not from North America, are, uh, all, are on their way back. They need to get back here. Uh, like I said, by Friday. It also is because of the vote. There's going to be a vote for a couple of different things for the uh, players' union. So all players take... Um, well, it's not 100% known, though, but in up until this point, every time there's been a league vote like that for players, they've all voted, and um, they probably all have to vote for the escrow thing or um, CBA. And uh, for just to start Phase 3, it's going to take a vote from the players to okay it. Because uh, the proposal that was put out by the NHL, remember, is only a proposal has to be approved by the, uh, by the NHLPA. Next up, tentative agreement. Um, move expiring contracts to October 31st. So it looks like there's a tentative agreement between the NHL and the NHLPA for... Um, uh, re, um, no, I got the wrong thing. Uh, for expiring contracts, so instead of uh, July first, which is when expiring contracts expire, <laughs> so that's players that are on the last year of a contract um, for whatever reason, um, they're gonna that's gonna be pushed back to October thirty first, um, and I think that leads into the next NHL NHLPA wants bonus payments to be paid July first. So this is a sticking 
point apparently in one of the things they're renegotiating or they're negotiating is the bonus payments. The NHL would like to push back bonus payments, which are due July 1st, and they're in the somewhere in the amount of $300 million throughout the league to be pushing that back till after the playoffs. And uh, the NHLPA is saying, no, they would like that to be paid on time. Um, and then there was one item I got that was added later. We'll do it now. Carey Price is named Habs Player of the Year for the fifth time. So Carey Price as the Montreal Canadiens Player of the Year, very deserving. Um, I guess you could argue um, other players, but I guess in a year that was not overall very good, Price still had his moments. He had his moments either way, really, but he's named Player of the Year for the fifth time. I think he still deserves it. So now, the um, NHL announced their Hall of Fame inductees yesterday. And I was out all day, so I didn't get home time to do a video about it. So I thought I'd put it in the news of the day. And uh, yeah, we'll take a look. They announced five players, four male hockey players, and a female hockey player, and one builder. And we'll start off with the First time, so these guys, this is our first time ballot. Jerome Ginla is first time eligible, gets in. He was an NHL all-rookie team in his rookie year, didn't write down the year. First team all-star in 2002, 2008, 2009. Second team all-star 2004. Won the Rocket Richard Trophy for the league's top scorer in 2002 and 2004. The Art Ross and the Pearson, but it's the same trophy. And it's listed as two different trophies. But it's the same trophy, so Art Ross, which becomes the Pearson um, in 2002. The King Clancy Trophy in 2004. He's the Molson Cup winner in Calgary in 2001, 2002, 3, 4, 8, and 11. In his career, 1,554 games, 625 goals, 675 assists, 1,300 points. And in the playoffs, 37 in 81 games. 37 goals, 31 assists, 4, uh, 68 points. Uh, like I said, he was a first ballot. Now, um, definitely deserving of that. Jerome McGinley, great player. Um, I'm just looking at his numbers uh, consistently all through his career. Even at the end, some uh, the hockey guy was saying he saw him when he was playing for L.A., and he still looked good, still looked like he could play another year. So uh, he was just good all the way. Yeah, his numbers fell off, obviously, but still a great hockey player, a great person, apparently. I don't know him personally, but you only hear good things about Aginla, and uh, very deserving of this. Next up, Marion Hosa gets in for his ballot as well. Um, he was on his all-rookie team as well. I believe that was 1999. He's a, was a second-team All-Star in 2009. He was in the All-Star Games in 2001, 3, 7, 8, and 12. He won the Stanley Cup with the Chicago Blackhawks three times, 2010, 13, and 15. And the quote from them is, best decision he ever made in hockey was signing with the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, he was uh, picked 12th overall in 1997 by Ottawa. Uh, I didn't write here that, that info for Aginla, sorry. 1,309 games, 525 goals, 609 assists for 1,100, excuse me, and 34 points. 205 playoff games, it's a good amount of playoff games, 52 goals, 97 assists, and 149 points. Well-deserving as a, of a first uh, first ballot. The people are complaining that maybe he shouldn't have gotten on his first ballot, but I, he deserves it. You know, maybe other guys should have got in, that's true, but, you know, he still deserves it. He can't take it away from them. Next up, and these are two older guys that deserve to get in. Kevin Lowe's getting, a, not as getting flack, but people are saying he should have got he shouldn't have got in over some other people. And if you want to look back, uh, one of them is Henderson, Paul Henderson. Um, but he's, it's not that he's not deserving of it. So uh, he was 21st overall in 1979. First Oilers draft pick ever. He scored their first NHL goal ever, and I imagine his first NHL goal. And it was assisted, uh, it was assisted on by Wayne Gretzky, I believe. Or he is, no, he was assisted on by Wayne Gretzky. A six-time Stanley Cup champion, five with Edmonton, one with the Rangers in 94. A defensive defenseman on a team that didn't play defense. So he was like, he was the only guy that was playing defense on that team. Literally 
Their their idea of defense was when the other team scores, we go out and score another one. They just will score more than the other team. That's their I think that was their idea of it. He missed the playoffs only once in his career. And a long career and he missed the playoffs only once. Um I think was it Larry Robinson? Larry Robinson didn't never miss the playoffs, so um, just slightly better than that. Seven All Star games. King Clancy Award winner in 1990. In 1988 playoffs, he played with a broken wrist, which everybody knew about. It was in a cast, but it was later revealed. I think Mark Messier revealed it to the press that he had also been playing with broken ribs. So reminds me of Bob Gainey playing with two separated shoulders. Um, yeah, Kevin Lowe, tough guy. Not easy. Broken ribs playing still. Well, 1,254 games, 84 goals. 347 assists, 431 points. So, obviously, he is a defensive defenseman. Those aren't big offensive numbers, but, you know, they're decent numbers. 214 uh, playoff games, 10 goals, 48 assists, 58 points. Also getting in with these guys, and remember, they can only have uh, four male hockey players any year in particular. That's the most they can do. Doug Wilson, who well-deserving and has been around a long time, and is overdue. Norris Trophy winner in 1982, five-time nominee for the Norris Trophy, first team All-Star in 1981-82, and I don't know if that's two times. The way it's written, it was, I don't know if it's 81 and 82 or the 81-82 season. Second team All-Star in the 84-85 season or in 84 and 85, and the 89-90 season or in 89-90. I don't, I couldn't really tell. It wasn't really, it was kind of vague, uh, weirdly, but uh, Eight-time All-Star, Hawks, the Blackhawks leader in career goals and points by a defenseman. Led the uh, led all Hawks defensemen in scoring ten straight seasons. First captain in the San Jose Sharks history. Thousand twenty-four games, two hundred thirty-seven goals, five hundred ninety assists, eight hundred twenty-seven points. Damn good numbers. Ninety-five playoff games, nineteen goals. 61 assists, 80 points. Well-deserving. He was a really good defenseman, played in an era where there were just a, f a couple of other defensemen that were higher profile than him, but he was right up there with anybody. Now, another player, but it's not a male player, <laughs> Kim St. Pierre, who was a goaltender and played for Canada's national team, plus other places, but national team, that's where you would have probably heard from her, heard of her. Three-time Olympic gold uh, medal uh, winner. Uh, Five-time IIHF World Champion, top goalie 2001 and 2004 at the World Championships, top goalie 2002 at the Olympics. And my dog's about to bark. One of, <coughs> one of her friends outside barked. <coughs> okay, Ray, not too much, not, not too much barking. Also, as a builder, so put in as a builder, current general manager of the Edmonton Oilers, Ken Holland. Long-time Red Wings GM, but he's currently the uh, Edmonton Oilers GM. He won four cups with Detroit. The first one he won, he was the assistant GM, and then three as the GM. So 97 as the assistant, 98, 2002, and 08. Four President Trophy wins uh, while he was GM. And um, I, mean, I didn't mark down anything else. Everyone knows Ken Holland. Um, Ken Holland is a long-time Detroit Red Wings GM and a really solid GM. I was making the moves needed to to keep that team um, at least as a contender or playoff team. And from I mean, there was a point where Red Wings were horrible. I guess ever since he took over or that period of time, they've been really good um, up until recently. Um, and that's it. I did the carry price. <laughs> okay, so that's it. There's my news of the day. Um, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Give a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, while you're down there doing that, leave me a comment in the comment section about any of these stories, anything you think you disagree with, anything I've said, or my opinion um, about any of these stories in the comment section. And if you haven't subscribed already, please head down there, subscribe, and ring that notifications bell, and that's going to get you your daily fix of Blue Blanc Rouge right here at Talking Habs. And I think that's it. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate that. Peace out. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you next video. Bye, y'all.